Are you getting into we're living in a simulation? I believe that we're living in a simulation. I don't understand it. I don't understand when people yeah. say we're living in a simulation. I have yeah. no idea what they're talking about. <clears throat> so if you understand that we're still talking about a creation, right? So mm -hmm. we believe, most people believe that, we believe that we're living in a created universe. I happen to believe so because when I look at the science, the quantum physics proves to me that someone or something created this. This isn't just pop up out of the blue and just, hey, here we are. There's a universe with people in it. <clears throat> so if you look at the quantum physics and what's been done recently in laboratories, scientists were able to do something incredible. They created a eighth dimensional quasi crystal. Now this eighth dimensional quasi crystal, it gave them a glimpse into understanding the third dimension. And this is how, when they position it in a particular angle, it created, <clears throat> excuse me, when they position, position it in a particular angle, it created something called a fourth dimensional quasi crystal. And when they positioned the fourth dimensional quasi crystal in a particular angle, it cast a shadow of a sphere. And the sphere is our universe. So they discovered that we are living in the shadow of a higher dimension. In other words, the angle of a higher multi-dimensional quasi crystal potentially could be what has created this gigantic sphere we call our universe. And what's interesting about that is, this is a shadow, but not a shadow of darkness, it's a shadow of light, it's a light matrix. We're talking about the, tech, the spiritual technology utilized to create this entire realm. This entire realm was created with some type of spiritual technology and this technology is so incredible, it's imbued with divine matter, divine wisdom, divine knowledge, but it's also imbued with darkness. But what's interesting about the darkness in this yin and yang, it always seems to be a battle against each other. But in the end, for the most part, the light always seems to win. Even if it takes a long period of time, the cycle happens where the darkness leaves and the light comes in. We're sitting in a room right now that's pretty, pretty well lit, right? If I was to turn on something dark, I couldn't make the light dim any. In other words, if I... There's nothing I can, there's no darkness I can inject into this room with these physical lights that would make this room dark right now. Mm -hmm. But if I turn all these lights off and just do something as simple as turn on the light on my cell phone, the darkness will flee from that light instantaneously. So the smallest amount of light will make darkness flee. And so I, took, I take that to the universal scale because I believe it's all fractal. I believe that we're, it's all as above, so below. And it's all about how many conscious beings does it take before the darkness flees. There's a number that we have to hit. When we hit that specific percentage of number of awakened souls on this planet, that's what it will flee. What we're talking about is we're talking about obtaining Christ consciousness. I get a little emotional about this. Because it's so powerful. <sighs> Sorry. So we're talking about <clears throat> we're talking about this. See, Christ never said he was returning. Jesus never said he was coming back. He said that Christ will return. We're talking about this. When every single person gets this right, it's back. And we're back in the golden age. <laughs>